we'll talk about Bergie and Nudibranch. That's not UPS. Goodbye, Aptasia. But it's, it's already, what, 8.30? They're not here yet. We got the day off because it's Christmas vacation. When are those gonna get here, you guys? Nine PM? Come on. Watch out dogs come in. Here they are. Let's do it all. The package is ice cold. Oh my gosh. Sitting in the snowbank there, this thing is ice cold. I can't even imagine they're alive. Salty underground, they're obviously, they're in this, you know, in a big way. But, uh, you know, if they've got enough business to print their own box. Stupid UPS has had this thing since 5 o'clock last night. It's now 5.20 Minneapolis time. So they've had it for 24 hours in the cold truck. Uh, I watched the guy driving around all day in his truck in our neighborhood. Never thought to bring the one item that says perishable and drop it off. God, it's frustrating. The heat pack's pretty warm. This is not very warm here. See in there. Are they moving? Can't tell. How many did you get? Ten should be ten. It's like one big mass there. They're probably trying to hover together to keep warm. Are they all in one thing? Yeah. Well, let's get. Um, you're gonna have to start a drip. This. That did not stay very warm in this box. Should you order outside the normal temperature range for acclimate fast? Acclimate faster than slower. If your water parameters are very different, you should acclimate a little more slowly than recommended. If you have very low nitrates and your salinity is the same, 30 minute acclimation is su sufficient. It says sometimes they're sluggish. When they arrive, this doesn't mean that they're dead or dying. Hmm. 
Well, what do you think? Let's get him acclimating. That's pretty cold. <laughs> That's real cold. Do you have a specimen container up here? No. Yeah, it looks pretty dead in there. Look at that. How does that look? I can't. Let's just get um. How about that. Think they're alive. Well, we're gonna have to just try. The one is like there. He's mo the one's moving his whiskers. Okay. So what's the other one? Side. I don't see 10 here. Well, they're piled together. Look, Look at the Aptasia in here, though. That one rock in the back is really full of it. Aptasia anemones can take over your tank pretty quickly and they multiply oh, there's one. fast. Um, you know, they can sting corals and, oh, and uh, things around them, and uh, they're generally unwanted uh, guests in your tank. But uh, with their quick spread, it's hard to get rid of them. So, and it's kind of like that all over the tank. And certain spots where the light is just right for Aptasia, you know, they're in here. There was a big one over here, and now he's gone. Hmm. Well, anyways, they said that 10 of these things would to take care of this problem and they're supposed to all be about half an inch long I paid extra for that so I paid 159 for 10 I don't see 10 there but maybe they'll split up eventually here and so it says we should feed the fish before we put the burgi in I suppose the fish they think they're fish food so they're gonna eat now while the burgi are acclimating the Bergia and nudibranchs uh, are a small invertebrate that's naturally found in the Caribbean, Mediterranean, even the Atlantic Ocean. Um, it usually reaches about one inch long, and some individuals can even get larger than that. It's like they're starting to separate out now, which is good. I can see how the fish would want to eat those little guys. We've been acclimating them for about an hour here. We're going to go ahead and put them in. It's hard to see. They say shut off every pump, shut off all the lights. We fed the fish three times now. So I'm going to go ahead and put these guys on a rock. I don't get how that was working. Don't hurt them. So it's a little bit intense getting these guys out of the cup because, you know, you don't want to hurt them with the edge of the eyedropper there. They give you like a cut-off uh, dropper. And, um, but I did manage to get them out. you got to keep these things, uh, when you put them in, in groups. You'd like to have, you know, like groups of two or three anyways uh, in, in each place that you put them in your tank and spread them around a little bit, but you got to get them in the rock so they can hide out in the crevices and not get eaten by fish. I thought you were going to put them in a cluster. Yeah, I'll put some more back there. You 
Nope. Lost him. Oh well, he's gonna go down, I think. Yeah, right in an aptasia. Is he in the aptasia? I can't see. You don't want to be putting these too close to an anemone um, because the aptasia can actually eat them. Also, shrimp can eat them. Arrow crabs will eat them. Uh, Melanaris wrasse will snack on these and be a quick lunch for them. So you got to be careful what you're putting, what kind of tank you're putting them in. Well, he went down in. That's all right. Yeah, I think he's okay. You should get a couple of these per gallon of tank water. There's two in there. No. Oh. Um, although they reproduce quickly, mine had eggs in a matter of days, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, the eggs will hatch in, in a couple of weeks, um, but you need a sufficient population to continue to grow because they'll you know die off from fish eating them from other natural causes and things going on in your tank and they will starve out once they run out of uh, aptasia so uh, you want to have a sufficient population to you know get things kick started you'll put these in your tank and likely never see them again because they hide um, during the day and they come out at night looking for the aptasia and I suppose it's because they want to do it while the fish are sleeping so they don't get eaten. Um, one thing about the nudibranch is they, uh, they eat and hunt for aptasia in groups. So you'll often see three of them at once eating on an aptasia if you do see them. And uh, that's just, they have to find each other to be able to take down a big aptasia, so that's why they do this. They need to do it in a group of two or three. So we're going to just leave the lights off here so the fish can't see those things, and we'll come back tomorrow and see what happens. So let's get all the lights off. There they are. So the nudibranchs are producing babies. Those are the spirals right there. Our nudibranch uh, baby sacs there. Egg sacs. So they're pretty tiny. Look, it's a nudibranch. That guy has gotten bigger. He's big. So if you look at my hand compared to him, you know, he's, he's a good, uh, I don't know, five eighths of an inch. Pretty cool. Once these guys reach uh, that about a half inch in size, they will lay eggs uh, every one to three days. Um, and each egg coil probably contains 50 eggs or so. Uh, if it's a really large adult, I understand, it could be up to a thousand eggs in an egg sack. So that boy must have been feasting on some uh, aptasia. So this guy here is like at least three quarters of an inch long. He has really gotten big. I zoom out, you know, he's Pretty good size. That's beautiful. I'm just kind of learning how to use this new lens set here. I wish I could get a shot of his backside, you know, the front side here. His back, I guess. Look at him, he is so cool. Oh, where's he going? Down the other side of the glass. <laughs> They're real hairy, aren't they? That's a reflection there in the upper corner. We don't often see them. Uh, I don't think there's any Aptasia left in our tank here. 
thought maybe all the nudies were gone, but here, here's one right here. I don't, I have no idea where they go. They go down in the holes and crevices of the rock, I think, at night. Or, I mean, in the day. But you know, they're kind of like a little caterpillar, like I said. They're, uh, I think they're cute. Cute little animal. Okay, look at this. He's like feeding off the top surface of the water there. I don't know what he's doing. I think he's looking for food on the top surface. So he put some shrimp eggs in there. I think he's eating them. There is, I can't find any Aptasia left in our tank, so these guys are probably starving. Caught the new Debronkin. I'm gonna sell them because I don't think it's right to keep them around. But I did put a piece of fish food in there. This is a PE pellets. And we'll see if he goes for it. Because I think the reason he was up on the glass is he's hungry. So we'll see if he wants that. So that's our show for today. Thanks everybody for watching and uh, please hit the subscribe button down below and uh, We'll see you next time. This Thanks is Gary. This is Lila. Bye bye. <laughs>well, we made a few videos on the ATS system. The plans are still available. I'll put the links below and some links after this uh, for the videos.